Chapter 4 The Unwritten Kabbalah 1. The point of view from which I approach the Holy Kabbalah in these pages differs, as far as I know, from that of all other writers on the subject. For to me it is a living system of spiritual development, not a historical curiosity. Few people, even among these interested in occultism, realize that there is an active esoteric tradition in our midst, handed down in private manuscripts and by mouth to ear. Still fewer knows that it is the Holy Kabbalah, the mystic system of Israel, which forms its basis. But where may we look more aptly for our occult inspirations than to the tradition which gave us the Christ? 2. The interpretation of the Kabbalah is not to be found, however, among the rabbis of the outer Israel, who are Hebrews after the flesh, but among those who are the chosen people after the spirit. In other words, they initiate. Neither is the Kabbalah, as I have learned it, a purely Hebraic system, for it has been supplemented during medieval times by such alchemical lore and by the intimate associations with it of that most marvellous system of symbolism, the Tarot. 3. In my presentation of the subject, therefore, I do not appeal so much to tradition in support of my views, as to modern practice among those who make use of the Kabbalah as their method of occult technique. It may be alleged, may be alleged against me that the ancient rabbis knew nothing of some of the concepts here set forth, to this I reply that it is hardly to be expected that they should, as these things were not known in their day, but are the work of their successors of the spiritual Israel. For my part, although I would not willingly mislead anyone concerning the teachings of those of ancient days, and upon matters of historical accuracy stand subjects to correction, from any who are better informed than I am in these matters, and their name is Legion. I care not one jot for the authority of tradition if it hampers the free development of a system of such practical value as the Holy Kabbalah, and I use the work of my predecessors as a quarry whence I fetch the stone to build my city. Neither am I limited to this quarry by any ordinance that I know of, but fetch also cheddar, cheddar, fetch also cheddar from Lebanon and gold from Ophir, if it suits my purpose. For, let it be clearly understood, therefore, that I do not say, this is the teachings of the ancient rabbis, rather do I say, this is the practice of modern Kabbalists, and for us a much more vital matter, for it is a practical system of spiritual unfoldment. It is yoga of the West. 5. Having thus guarded myself as far as possible against blame for not having done what I never undertook to do, let me now define my own position in the matter of scholarship and general qualifications for the task in hand. So far as actual scholarships goes, I am in the same class as William Shakespeare, having little Latin and less Greek, and of Hebrew only that peculiar portion which is cultivated by occultists, the ability to transliterate unpointed Hebrew script for the purpose of geometric calculations. Of any knowledge of Hebrew as a language, I am guiltless. 6. Whether such frank 
acknowledgement of my deficiencies will serve to disarm criticisms I do not know. No doubt it will be alleged against me, and not without justification, that one so ill-equipped should not have undertaken the task at all. To this I reply that if one saw a man laying injured, should the omitted absence of a medical qualification debar one from going to his assistance and giving him what help he one could, pending the arrival of qualified attention. My work upon the Kabbalah is of the nature of first aid. I find an invaluable system lying neglected and ill qualified for the task as my as I might be, I am striving to draw attention to its possibilities and restore it to its proper place as the key to Western occultism. And it is my chief hope in so doing that it might attract the attention of scholars and they will continue the task of translation and investigation of the Kabbalistic manuscripts which are as yet a vein of which only the outcroppings have been worked. 7. One qualification for my task I can plead in justification, however. For the last ten years I have lived and moved and had my being in the practical Kabbalah. I have used its method both subjectively and objectively, till they have become a part of myself. And I know from experience what they yield in psychic and spiritual results, and their incalculable value as a method of using the mind. 8. It is not required of those who would use the Kabbalah as their yoga that they should acquire any extensive knowledge of the Hebrew language, all they need is to be able to read and write the Hebrew characters. The modern Kabbalah has been pretty thoroughly naturalized in the English language, but it retains, and must ever retain, all its words of power in Hebrew, which is the sacred language of the West, just as Sanskrit is the sacred language of the East. There are those who have objected to the free employment of Sanskrit terms in occult literature, and no doubt they will object even more strongly to the employment of Hebrew characters, but their use is unavoidable, for every letter in Hebrew is also a number, and the numbers to which words add up are not only an important clue to their significance, but can also be used to express the relationships existing between different ideas and potencies. 9. According to MacGregor Mather, in the admirable essay which forms the introduction to his book, the Kabbalah is usually classed under four heads. First one is the practical Kabbalah, which deals with talismanic and ceremonial magic. Second is a dogmatic Kabbalah, which consists of the Kabbalistic literature. Third is the literal Kabbalah, which deals with the use of letters and new numbers. Fourth is unwritten Kabbalah, which consists of a correct knowledge of the manner in which the symbols, systems, are arranged on the tree of life, and concerning which MacGregor Method says, I may say no more on this point, not even whether I myself have or have not received it. But as this portentous, portentous hint is elaborated by the late Mr. Mrs. MacGregor Method in her introduction to the new edition of his book in the following plant spoken words. Simultaneously with the publication of the Kabbalah in 1887, he received instructions from his occult teachers to prepare what was eventually to become his esoteric school. 
it may be justifiable to say that if he did receive the unwritten Kabbalah, it has for some years ceased to be unwritten. For after a quarrel with MacGregor Mather, Alistair Crowley, the well known author and scholar, published the lot. His books are now rare and hard to come by, and being much valued by more scholarly of esotericists, their price has gone up out of sight, and they seldom come into the second hand book market. 10. The breaking of an initiation oath is a serious matter, and a thing that I, for my part, do not care to do. But I admit of no authority that debars me from collecting and collating all available material that has been published upon any subject, and interpreting it according to the best of my understanding. In these pages, it is the system given by Crowley of which I shall avail myself to supplement the points upon which MacGregor Methods, Wine Westcott's and A. E. White's, the principal modern authorities upon the Kabbalah, are silent. 11. As to whether I myself have received any knowledge of the unwritten Kabbalah, it would as ill be seen me as MacGregor method to be explicit upon this point, and having followed his classic example of burying my head in the sand and waving my tail, I will return to the consideration of the matter in hand. 12. The essence of the unwritten Kabbalah lies in the knowledge of the order in which certain set of symbols are arranged upon the tree of life. This tree, Otschim, consists of the ten holy sephirots arranged in particular pattern and connected by lines which are called the thirty-two paths of the sephir Yetira, or divine emanations. See the sephir Yetira by Wine Westcott. Here there exists one of the blinds or traps for the uninitiated, in which the ancient rabbis delighted. We find, if we count them, that there are twenty-two, not thirty-two paths upon the tree. But for their purposes, the rabbis treated the ten sephirot themselves as paths. Oh, that's why. It will then be seen how the paths, without discrepancy or overlapping, It will then be seen how the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet can be associated with the paths without discrepancy or overlapping. With them also are associated the 22 tarot trumps, the atus or abodes of thought. Concerning the tarot cards, there are three modern authorities of notes. Dr. Encorse, Encorse. Or Papus, the French writer, Mr. A. E. White, and the manuscripts of MacGregor Method's Order of the Golden Dawn, which Crowley published upon his own authority. All three are different. Concerning the system Mr. White gives, he himself says, There is another method known to initiates. There is reason to suppose that this is the method used by Mathers. Papus disagree with both these writers in his method, but as his system does violence to many of the correspondences when placed upon the tree, the final test of all systems, and as the method Crowley system, fits admirably I think we may justly conclude that the letter is the correct transitional order, and I propose to adhere to it in these pages. 13. The Kabbalists further placed upon the paths of the tree the signs of the zodiac, the planets and the element. Now there are twelve signs, seven planets and four elements. 
making twenty-three symbols in all. How are these to be fitted on to the twenty-two paths? Herein is another blind, but the solution is simple. Upon the physical plan, we are ourselves in the element of earth. Therefore, the symbol does not appear upon the paths which lead into the unseen. Remove this, and we are left with twenty-two symbols, which, fit accurately and correctly placed, are found to correspond perfectly with the tarot charms, each elucidating the other in the most remarkable fashion and giving the key to esoteric astrology and tarot divination. Fourteenth, the essence of each path is to be found in the fact that it connects two of the Sephirots, and we can only understand its significance by taking into account the nature of the linked spheres upon the tree. But a Sephira cannot be understood upon a single plan; it has a fourfold nature. The Kabbalists express this by saying that there are four worlds. First one is Atzilut, the archetypical world or world of emanations, the divine world. Second one is Bria, the world of creation, also called Korsia, the world of thrones. Third one is Yetzira, the world of formation and of angels. The last one is Asia, the world of action, the world of matter. See MacGregor methods. The Kabbalah unveiled. Fifteen. The ten holy sephirots are held to have each its own point of contact with each of the four worlds of the Kabbalists. In the Asilutic world, they manifest through the ten holy names of God. In other words, the great unmanifest shadow forth. Through the three negative veils of existence, which hang behind the crown, declares itself in manifestation as ten different aspects, which are represented by the different names used to denote deity in Hebrew scriptures. These are variously rendered in the authorized version, and the knowledge of their true significance and the spheres to which they belong enables us to read many of the riddles. Of the Old Testament, sixteen. In the Briotic world, the divine emanations are held to manifest through the ten mighty archangels, whose names play such an important part in ceremonial magic. It is the worn and affected remnant of these words of power that are the barbarous name of evocation of medieval magic. Not one letter of which may be changed. Why this is so may readily be seen when we remember that in Hebrew a letter is also a number, and the number of a name has an important significance. Seventeen. In the Yetziraic world, the divine emanations manifest not through a single being, but through different types of beings, which are called. The angelic hosts or choirs. Eighteen. The Asiatic world is not, strictly speaking, the world of matter when we view from the Sephirotic standpoint, but rather the lower astral and etheric planes, which together form the background of matter. Upon the physical plane, the divine emanations manifest through what may not ineptly be called the ten mundane chakras. Likening these centers of manifestations to the centers that exist in human body, an exact analogy. These chakras are the premium mobile or first swearings, the sphere of the zodiac, the seven planets, and the elements taken together, ten in all. Nineteen. It will be seen from the foregoing that each sephira will therefore consist, firstly, of its mundane chakra, secondly, of an angelic host of beings, divas, or archons, principality or powers, according to the terminology used. 
thirdly, an angelic, archangelic consciousness or throne. And fourthly, a special aspect of the deity, God as he is in his entirety, being hidden behind the negative veils of existence, incomprehensible to enlightened human consciousness. 20. The Sivirots may justly be considered macrocosmic, and the paths microcosmic, for the Sivirots connected as they sometimes are in old diagrams by a flash of lightning, which is often depicted as hilted like a fiery sword, represents the successive divine emanations which constitute creative evolution, whereas the paths represent the successive stages of the unfolding of cosmic realization in human consciousness. In old pictures, a serpent is often depicted as twined about the boughs of the tree. This is the serpent, Netrustan, who holds his tail in his mouth, the symbol of wisdom and initiation. The coils of the serpent, which correctly arranged upon the tree, cross each of the paths in succession and serve to indicate the order in which they should be numbered. With the help of this glyph, then, it is a simple matter to arrange all the tables of symbols in their correct positions upon the tree, granted that the symbols are given in their correct orders in the tables. In certain modern books, which rank as authorities upon the subject, the correct order is not given. The writers, apparently, holding that this should not be revealed to the uninitiated, but as this order is given correctly in certain old books, and for the matter of that, in the Bible itself and the Kabbalistic literature, there seems to me no point in deliberately misleading students with spurious information. To refuse to divulge anything may be justifiable, but how is it possible to justify the handing on of misleading statements? No one is going to be prosecuted nowadays for their studies in unorthodox sciences, so there can be but one purpose in withholding teachings that relates solely to the theory of the universe and to the philosophy arising therefrom, and in no way to the method of practical magic and that purpose is to retain a monopoly of the knowledge which confers prestige, if not power. 21. For my part, I believe that this selfishness and exclusiveness are the bane of the occult movement rather than its safeguard. It is the old sin of retaining the knowledge of God in the hands of a priesthood and denying it to all outside the sacred clan, justifiable enough when the people were savages, but unjustifiable in the case of modern students. For when all is said and done, the desired information can be worked out from existing literature by those who care to take the trouble, or purchased plainly set forth by those who can afford high prices for books now rare. Surely the possession of ample time and ample cash should not be the test of the fitness to obtain the sacred wisdom. 22. No doubt I shall expose myself to a shower of abuse from the self-constituted guardians of this knowledge who may hold that their precious secrets have been betrayed. To this I reply that I am not betraying anything that is secret, but collecting which has already been given to the world and is of a simple and well-known nature. When I first had access to certain manuscripts, I believed them to be secret and unknown to the world at large. But a wider acquaintance with occult literature has revealed to me that the information is to be found scattered broadcast through it. Much, in fact, to which the initiate is sworn to secrecy has been published by methods and wine wet gods themselves. 
and as recently as 1926, a new edition of Mathe's work on the Kabbalah was brought out under the, under the editorship of his widow, who may be assumed to have known his wishes. And in that work will be found most of the tables that I give in these pages. As these catalogues of being were originally given to the world by Isaiah, Ezekiel, and various medieval rabbis, it may justly be held that the copyright in them has lapsed owing to the passage of time. In any case, such ownership as there may be in these ideas is vested in the original author and not in any subsequent commentator. And that author, according to Kabbalah itself, is the Archangel Metatron. <laughs> 23. Much that was once common knowledge has been gathered up and confined under the initiate's oath of secrecy. It is Crowley's jibe at his teachers that they bound him to secrecy with terrible oaths and they confided the Hebrew alphabet to his safekeeping. 24. The philosophy of Kabbalah is the esotericism of the West. In it we find such a cosmogony as is found in the stanzas of Dyson. which were the basis of me huh? Blavatsky's work. Therein she found the framework of traditional doctrine, which she expounded in her great book, The Secret Doctrine. This Kabbalistic cosmogony is the Christian Gnosis. Without it we have an incomplete system in our religion, and it is this incomplete system which has been weakness of Christianity. In early fathers, it is in the homely metaphor, threw away the baby with the bath water. A very cursory acquaintance with the Kabbalah serves to show that here we have the essential keys to the riddles of scriptures in general and the prophetic books in particular. Is there any good reason why initiates of the present day should put all this knowledge into a secret box and sit upon the lid? If they consider that I am wrong to give accurate information upon matters which they consider their private preserve, I reply that this is a free country and they are entitled to their own opinion. <laughs>